I was just getting followers from everywhere, like all over the entire world from that video. That first day, one hit 8 million in the first day. So I went from 20K to 30K. But then within like two weeks, I was at 300K. Back, episode two of 25 months. I am your host, Tej Salur. And I'm your co-host, Jack Neal. This is a podcast about understanding the businesses creators are building behind their following. We found a statistic that basically showed that the average career span of an influencer is 24 months. And so this podcast is all about figuring out what influencers will do come that 25th month. Today, we have a very special guest on. Someone who has over 10 million followers on TikTok and just hit a million subs on YouTube. You have that like speaker voice, Jack, like from your TikToks that's coming through. I like it. I know. This person was was working at a Cold Stone for almost the last decade. When I walk into a Cold Stone and the first thing I hear is, wait, you're the reason why I work here. And just now announced that he's potentially opening up his own place. We present to you, Mr. Dylan LeMay. We got a couple of notes before we get into this. One, this is a very like ratchet podcast set. And to that point, we've actually recorded this podcast once already. Like, let's just be up front there. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> I f***ed up something in the, in the recording. I'll take the blame. It's, 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 it's also like, comical, like comical, comical at this point. At this point. Um, yeah. um, and if, if anything, anything, anything it, like, it helps, helps us. Because, us because, we're basically going to talk what we talked about <laughs> already, like a couple of days ago. So if it's a little awkward, it's a little awkward. Dylan, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. <laughs> Dylan, it's nice to see you again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> More quality time with the both of you. Oh, you can what complain. a guy. Absolutely, what a guy. Dude, we're obsessed with the, the creator economy, right? Understanding everything that's being built. Dylan clowns me every time I say the word creator economy. So I don't um, clown you. I appreciate it by <laughs> imitating it or whatever that would be. <laughs> so we want to get into like what you're doing. I think you have a really interesting story. We met a couple months ago. You've, you've had such an impact on my, not even just like TikTok career, just the way you kind of think through things in general. How did you get your start? I'm Dylan. I started at Cold Stone when I was 15 years old. I was getting <laughs> start from the start. Start. Um, no, so I worked at Cold Stone for almost like 10 years. If I stayed there, it would be 10 years in February, which is crazy. Wow. I heard about TikTok. I thought it was just a weird dancing app for teenagers, teenage girls specifically. I was like, how would I ever do anything on here? So I just wrote it off as something I'd never do. And then this artist I followed on Instagram, who's like 40 something years old, was like, oh my gosh, if you're an artist, you need to get on this app. And that like blew my mind of what I thought TikTok was. Mm -hmm. So then in my head, that was kind of there. And I was like, maybe I should check this out. And then it's like February of 2020, where all the pandemic is starting and everyone's just bored and there's nothing to do. So I downloaded TikTok. It was like February 18th or something weird. Got TikTok, watched a ton of it. Like, studied it i was like what how does this app work it's not teenage girls dancing but what is it why are these videos going viral what does it take to go viral and i was just like hungry and i was just devouring this app there was one day that i checked my screen time and it said that i had watched 14 hours of tiktok okay that's just one app that's just tiktok okay 14 <laughs> hours yeah that that's how bad it was but to me it was just like a game i was just trying to figure out like how does this work and then eventually i decided to start like playing the game uh, mm -hmm. So I started making videos. I was just playing around. My first few videos, I had no idea what I was doing because I didn't really watch TikTok yet. But then there was a certain point where I was like, I watched a ton of TikTok, you know, like 14 hours worth in a day. And then I was like, okay, I think I get this. And so I, I started to test things out. I made a cake for my uh, good friend. It was her gender reveal party. I made a cake for mm -hmm. it. This is my friend, Aria. She just recently got married and, just, and now they're expecting a baby. I got to make their wedding cake, and I guess they liked it, so they asked me to make their gender reveal cake as well. And then that video kind of popped off. It was like 300000 which I was like, okay, cool. I kind of get this. And then a couple, like a week or two later, I made one for my sister's graduation. This is my sister, Destiny. She's never had a graduation ceremony, and none of our family could come into town to visit. So me and a few friends decided that we're going to throw her a graduation party, and I'm going to make her her favorite cake. Then that one hit $2 million. So I was like, okay, cool. Like, I think I really do get this. And so I just kept yeah. playing around with the app and until... Uh, I just started getting viral videos. So one thing I wanted to pull from that is that you said you've watched a ton of TikTok. And when you decided to start playing that game, you were trying to figure out what worked, right? What were you looking yeah. at, right? You said you kind of figured it out, right? You're were, you were posting things. You're like, okay, I think this will go viral. In those early stages, yeah. what were you looking at and be like, this has the potential of going viral? I just would binge TikTok. And I mean, back then, 
if somebody had made multiple videos and those videos were doing well, everyone pretty much knew who they were because there weren't like TikTokers back then. I mean, there were like the people that did dances and stuff like that yeah. that are like TikTokers, but not like the people we look at as TikTokers now. Um, so for me, I remember there was this girl and she was like redoing her shed. And I'm like, everyone kind of remembers that. Yeah. But there was this girl, she like redid her shed for all of her friends or something. And I remember seeing that video and I was like, oh, these videos are doing really well. And so when I made my cake, I think I kind of like did that style where mm -hmm. it was more so like what I was doing. And I did a voiceover and I was like, oh, this is what people like on TikTok. Uh, so I kind of mirrored my first video after that. But then there was like other people I saw that were doing voiceovers. And so I was just trying to understand what they were doing. And then I just kind of implemented that into my video. I think you, you touched on a good point there of like your first TikTok was kind of a, it was either heavily, it was heavily inspired by someone else. Right. Yeah. And I think a big question I get from a lot of people is talking about like, Hey, how do I start? What should I post? And even when, uh, we, we can come through when I had a call with you like a month ago or so about how, starting a new idea, it's so hard to just do it from like a blank canvas. Right. Yeah. It's like, Hey, everyone eventually like heavily inspired almost on that bridge of potentially just copying sometimes, but that's okay. I think yeah. in the beginning, especially in just, it's like how you evolve that. So that's cool. That's really cool. So you watch this girl yeah. who had like was building sheds, right? You're like, okay, this like progression, right? Like one of the biggest yeah. things on TikTok is seeing something go from start to finish. It's a whole niche on TikTok. Yes. And you learn a lot of like do's and don'ts. So, I mean, some people, they would make it like a 15 part series like that girl's was, which made sense. But that was one thing that I vowed to like never do. Mm. So if I was going to make a series, it wasn't, I always wanted to make the final product in the video because I hated that. It was like, come back yeah. for part two. I'm like, I will never be that person. Yeah, Jack. Nightmarish facts about your body that you probably shouldn't think about. Part two. Screw those the guys, thing, right? No, so Jack, does it, Jack does it the right way. So Jack gives you a bunch in an episode, and then he'll be like, blah, 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 part two. So it's like a continuation off the last one, mm. but you got a you got a conclusion in the first one. So it's yeah, more of okay. a series rather than, here, I'm going to make 15 videos over a 12-week period, and you're going to finally see me make one cake. Mm. Like, no, I'm making 12 yeah. cakes. Each cake has something to do with the same thing. That's a series. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jack does series in the right way. Each episode has like a finished product as opposed exactly. to the, the finished into, product yeah. being in the last episode. Are you guys on car detailing TikTok or is that just me? Like people yes. who- No, yeah, yeah. yeah? What's her name? What's oh, her name? The one girl. All right. So this is the second car of the day. I'm going to start by pulling out the mats and scrubbing those down. She's she awesome. shot me on her video. She said, even no. the cold stone guy follows me. And I was like, I love no. you. Yes. She's, she's like, blowing up. Yeah. She's, she's blowing, blowing up. up. She's the only person I, I think is like doing three minute videos like consistently and yeah. wow. Well. And everyone's like watching. Them. Are they doing yeah. well? They're doing yeah. really well. Like she's blowing up from three minute videos. I watch the whole yeah. thing. Like it's the only person I stop and I'm like, it, and it's like, it's one of those like satisfying, like niche type of things, yeah. right? Seeing something go from so dirty, like the cars she gets are so dirty. It's like, why wouldn't like, if you watch 15 seconds in, you're going to watch the whole thing. Cause you're already so yeah. far into this progression. It's interesting. Like I just had a TikTok blow up like the, the, my leverage one. Right. And it was me cleaning yeah. my kitchen and I implemented that. I actually was pretty inspired by like, let's call them progression TikToks, and i just voice yeah. over me cleaning a dirty kitchen into making it clean it's like a it's a hack dude it's such a hack something that's interesting though is ever since TikTok has introduced like the scrubbing feature where you can like skip to the ends mm. of videos a lot of I those videos that. have become pointless so like yeah, people have had to like good. find different ways to like imp implement the storytelling like yours to just, i'm not watching your video to like see you clean your kitchen you know yeah. that's just like satisfying while i'm actually like listening to like what you're talking about so like what does she do in her videos like is there a just good storytelling and like knowledge. good cuts there's yeah. awesome she's, knowledge. she's feeding you knowledge and i mean that's to go back to kind of like me being here i mean that's one wave that i rode heavily at the beginning i mean everything was i'm just giving you it's like how it's made i'm showing you behind the scenes of how everything works at mm -hmm. coldstone you know and so it's fun. It's satisfying content. But at the end of the day, like I'm feeding you knowledge. And so people just kept coming back because I was just giving them so much information that it was just like so interesting to learn about. It's and so I mean, that's kind of what Jessica, the girl that we talked about, the details cars. Not doing a 180 transformation. I'm not making this car look as brand new as possible. And the reason is I don't detail for YouTube views. Like this is a real customer with real priorities, budgets, expectations. She's giving you so much information because most people just get a bucket and like a sponge or they just take it and get it clean. But she's like giving you like 
valuable information that's just like over your head but you're just like this yeah. is so cool i'm just still listening I'm still wait learning. do you ever do you ever at let's shout her out so her name is jessica tran and then her at is jt mobile detailing on tiktok she has five hundred seventy four thousand right now awesome Dude, she's killing it it's so satisfying to see her clean things though right you're not going to just scrub to see the final product you want to see her like putting the effort to make something go from like dusty to shiny it's because she uses <laughs> methods that you don't think of it's like yeah. new like you're getting new information every time exactly 100 percent. kind of on the flip side backs too <laughs> which Tap is backs? entertaining good clap backs oh clap back. oh, oh comment yeah. responses she's, she's funny she's a great personality as well yeah i think on the flip side to play on the scrubbing feature while we're kind of in this is like like with party shirt right i love those guys but i'm like whenever i see they their stuff them. now i'm I'm yeah, I'm scrubbing through like 100%. 20 seconds. I'm wonder I'm like actually wondering how um how it's affecting their stuff. It, it has it's made their views gone down. I did look at it. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, their views really are performing I'd say about half as well as they were at the peak. Wow. I 100% oh, wow. do it every time I see one of their videos. No shame, I do it every time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Let's just yeah, explain yeah. like Party Shirt. So Party Shirt, they're the guys that do Factor Cap. I'm Ivy. And I'm Max. And welcome to Factor Cap. Where we test TikTok trends. To see if they're real. Or bullshit. So here's our predictions. Where someone on TikTok will basically like do a trend, some life hack, and they test it out. Um, and they like go through the whole process and then they have the end result. Mm-hmm. So it's Factor Cap. What we're saying is we just kind of like skip to the end to see if it's like actually Factor, actually Cap. But like but before also, the scrubbing feature, you didn't have to do that. And their intros are so long though. Like sometimes they even show like multiple people doing it. I'm like, I didn't need this. Just show me like five seconds of what mm. you're about to do. But it's like, sometimes it's like 30 seconds. And I'm like, I just watched someone's whole video to watch your video. Yeah, it ain't worth exactly. it. Someone who does things similar is like Joe Bartolozzi, right? Yeah. Like I think um, you're never scrubbing through his stuff just because he's such a personality. Yeah. Dude, like it is so funny to watch him. The amount of times I've watched, I'm X, I'm Ivy, welcome to Factor Cap, right? It's like me mindlessly on TikTok, I'm just like scrub, right? So, so. J- just a critique of X and Ivy, like w- w- what do you guys think they need to do? I would suggest like implement some of Joe's style and like add some like comedy to it, like add some commentary of their selves to it because they need to like show more of their personality so people are watching those full videos. I think now I would say make the beginning shorter. So just show like what they're going to do. But even just simplify that, like this is what the thing that they're testing is. And then I don't think they even have to go through the introduction of their names anymore because mm-hmm. I think most people kind of know them or they can just yeah. refresh that and implement it into what they're doing. Just like simplify yeah. it all. Just make it quicker. 100%. I mean, I think we've all kind of most I know me and Malad both have just shortened our videos because we just realize if our videos are shorter and they're more to the point, then people are going to watch it. It's going to do better. Which yeah, as before, so when I started, my videos were only a minute long. Every every video yeah. was like at least forty to fifty seconds long, at least. Dude, Jack, you're the only person I'm st- I've still seen to this day making over thirty second videos. I make like, fi- I, used to I make be- fifty nine second videos. I make fifty seven to fifty nine seconds. Because my theory That's with insane. it is that if I've hooked someone long enough, then they'll like watch keep the watching the whole thing. You know, mm-hmm. so it, it, there's different methods to it, but I think shorter's definitely the way to go. Honestly, yeah. yeah. One of my friends, Sean Ulasha, like we kind of grew up together and um, kind of make very similar content in the sense that like we were making 45, 55 second long videos and now it's, uh, minds are under under 30 every single time. It's crazy. It's crazy. But also my best performing video in the last like, I don't know, 10 videos is a video that is a minute long. Really? Yeah. Is it the, yeah. uh, the ice cream one? Generation one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. My grandma gave me permission to give you our 120 year old family recipe. I will warn you it's an old school recipe, so not many things are exact. You need to heat three and one third cup sugar, two heaping tablespoons, not like the measuring ones, but actual tablespoons of flour, eight beaten eggs, and one can of evaporated milk. Once that comes to a boil, you can go ahead and strain it and then add it to your ice cream machine. Then you're going to add whole milk until the ice cream machine is full. This makes a gallon and a half of ice cream. The salt melts the ice, but keeps it nice and cold. That way it'll freeze so much faster. Once the ice cream gets thick, you're going to let it sit and then harden. This is actually the scooper that my great great grandma used when she scooped this out and sold it for a nickel a scoop whenever we break down like pieces of content right we like to say like oh this is why it was but dude there's thousands of factors that all come together even if i didn't know you dylan right like i thought that was a genuinely interesting story Mm -hmm. right of like you don't you don't see that a lot like you you showed you showed the uh, recipe right and i was like whoa like that added so much credibility as small as it was Right, I was like, oh, we're, wow. we're so talking like, about I'm, the video where you talk about like the old ice cream machine, right? Yeah, I, I yeah, yep. cool, cool. I, I did see that. 
so when you have like a really good idea, then maybe it is like beneficial to make that video longer. Like when you yeah, know that you're going to hook people in. One piece of advice that I was told by somebody when I was starting to think about doing YouTube is in my head, I was like, oh, YouTube, I can't do that. I have to make a 10 minute video. And they're like, no, you never focus on the time. You just make the video. And if the video is this long, it's that long. And that's one mm. thing that I did with that video is like, I couldn't make that video any shorter. And because there was so much that I had to pack in there, honestly, I could have made like a three minute video, but I was like, that's too much. So I got it down to like a minute, but to tell the story I needed to tell it, it had to be at least a minute. And I think that's yeah. more important is to tell the, your story, not just to make a short video, if that makes sense. For sure. 100%. I think it's super smart. There's a lot of people stuck on, like, especially on YouTube, right, to make 10 minute videos so they can put like some mid-roll ads in there, right? Yeah. That's it's eight I, I know, now, it's a whole, yeah. Oh, it's eight? Yeah. That's crazy. YouTube's a, you, YouTube's a whole different demon. Dude, that's yeah. crazy. I, I can't imagine. I kind of want to get back to your story, though, just to unpack it a little bit, right? So we kind of got through. You worked at Coldstone. It was this, like, peak in COVID and the, on TikTok, right? You're like, okay, I want to get on this, right? I started making videos. When did you switch over to making, like, your POV-style content, and why? I had a friend, and we were just talking throughout COVID because, I mean, everyone had to talk through their phones. You couldn't have actual face-to-face -face friendships. And he's like, I can't cook. So I made these, like, videos making fun of him, like, showing him how to cook. And so it was just like whenever I'd make something because I used to make everything at home. So I was making breakfast and I just put my phone. I was like, how am I going to record this? I have to use both my hands. And so I had the <laughs> tripod that I bought so I could become TikTok famous as a joke. <laughs> I didn't think I actually would. Yeah. And I hooked the tripod like in my shirt and I did it. And so I just made this video and I still have the video to this day, but it's horizontal. It's kind of funny. I did a video at work where I think I like put it in my apron, like hung it in my apron and I was like, this is kind of cool. And then one day, just for fun, I made a video with the tripod around my neck. And I was like, this is kind of cool. And I posted that video and it was like a little tiny thing. It was like tiny Tuesday before it was even on Tuesdays. And mm. then uh, one day I was just goofed around at work. And then I made that first day at Coldstone video. And then that's when it really popped off. And I was like, okay, I guess this is like my style. This what is, is my What lane. is popped off? What is uh, like, like metric wise? Where were you at? Yeah. So that was back in the day when... I mean, my videos would get like 100,000 views or something. This one got 8 million in the first day. The first day. <laughs> yeah. And I had like, what did I have? I probably had like 20, not even, I probably had like 10,000 followers or something. Wait, wait, wait. And, uh, how you many did had... this take, this, take you to? How many did this take me to? Um, after that, like the roller coaster ride was just in full. I think within a week I had 300,000. I could, I can look. I mean, it's all on here. Yeah, it happened real fast. After that, I just made that a series. And so that first video, I had maybe like 10,000 or so. I don't think, no, I don't think I had 10,000 yet. I think I had less than that. Like I can tell uh -oh. you, let me scroll down real quick. Did you say you were at 20,000 followers and averaging 100K views? Dude, honestly, I don't even know. I don't know. Oh, God. But I wasn't I was really like, posting. Oh, I'd post like once a day or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me see what this stuff is back here. Which sounds so there. normal, right? To like anyone else. Like I was just posting once a day. <laughs> all right so the first video that i posted oh wow, i didn't even realize that the first video that popped off it's not even at a million views yet but it got like three hundred thousand. my sister said two million it's at 3.2 million now oh actually so no i was at 10k so i had 10k that first day one hit eight million in the first day and then <sighs> the next day i made a video for 20k and then the next day after that i made a video for 50k i think that's insane. Oh, no, for 30K. So the next day, so I went from 20K to 30K. My whole page just refreshed. That's great. But then within like yeah. two weeks, I was at 300K. What was the most followers you gained in one day? Dude, I don't even remember anymore, but it was a lot. I mean... Like a million? I don't think a million, but it was definitely a ton. I would have to go... <laughs> so crazy. I'd have to go back and look through it all. I, I could figure that all out, but it would take me a minute. Wow, dude. It's so crazy. Yeah, it was insane. It was absolutely insane. I had like focal videos that like really set me off. So I had the first day at Coldstone video, that one hit 8 million the first day. It's at like 14 million right now. Uh, but that one just kept growing and growing. And so I was just getting followers from everywhere, like all over the entire world from that video. Mm -hmm. After that, I made that a series. And so then those videos would do well. They'd all get like multi millions. And this is like before I even had like a couple hundred thousand. And so these videos are doing really well. And the reason why they're doing so well is because I was getting so many followers from them. So they just kept sending this video out to more and more people. And then it was like a week before Father's Day last year. I made this video for my dad for Father's Day. 
and I made him ice cream in Missouri and I took it on a plane and I flew it all the way to Michigan. And then that video got 17 million views. Like it popped off. That video is so yeah. cool though. I, I put so much thought and effort into that video. It was so much fun. Is, is that your most viral video? No, no. <laughs> No, come on, Jack. Come on. What do you think? Seventeen million? Oh my no, god! No, I had this one video. It was this. So for a while there, I made just cakes. It was like all I did was make cakes because I was getting so many orders that I couldn't make any other videos. Pretty much that weren't cake videos. And this lady called in and she wanted me to make her a cheesecake. And I was like, we don't make cheesecakes, but I can make you a cheesecake ice cream cake. And so that I convinced her to do that. And her name was. Uh, what was her name? Her name was Billy, I think. No, not Billy, because not that would make sense. Eilish? Eilish. <laughs> no, Bobby. Her name was Bobby. And so I said, I made a cake for Bobby or something like that. And then that was like the hook of the video because everyone just kept saying a girl named Bobby. And like everyone just commented that over and over again. This video hit like 50 million views or something like that. Like Dixie followed me from that video. Like there's just a list of big names of people that just followed me from this video because oh, wow. it just got sent out to like the world. I mean, everyone followed Dude. me from that video. It's crazy. Wow. It's so crazy to think about, right? Like you were, I, I think this is so inspiring. Like I always ask you this, like, what would you do right now if you weren't, if TikTok didn't blow you up? What was your plan? I'd, I'd probably still be trying to buy a Cold Stone. I, there's yeah. no words. Like that, like wanted, that's, yeah. back then that was me dreaming big. It was only mm -hmm. a Cold Stone someday. Jeez. A lot of people, right, especially in, I think, the educational field, like kind of where like Jack and I are in, right? We're so caught up on this idea of having like a call to action at the end of the video. Like, hey, follow for more, right? Mm. Um, you, Malad, like all these people, like I, I don't think you've probably never done that before, right? Except for your most mm. recent YouTube video, no? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> not even saying like drop no, I... a like, smash the like button, whatever. Yeah, I never really do it. Uh, I think I've done it probably, I can count on like one hand, probably like five times at most that I've yeah. ever done it. Um, mm -hmm. And normally it like makes sense in the video, but it's so, so rare. Assuming that's what's driving people to follow, why would you say people are following you? And like, why do you not do it? What makes it like that decision of like, not even, I, I see a lot of people, I think Jack, you do that now at the very end, right? You put like the, uh, the follow yep. like mm -hmm. animation, mm -hmm. right? I'm wondering what your decision was to that. My goal is never to blow up. Like I just enjoy making videos. So it doesn't make sense that I'd be like begging people to, to like my video or to follow me or whatever. Cause yeah, I'm Jack. not saying what you do, Jack. Jack, I'm not saying what you do. <laughs> I'm, I'm desperate. I'm you desperate out. at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but so like for me, I didn't Please even think follow. about it at the beginning because at the beginning, yeah. my goal wasn't to like grab followers. My goal wasn't to get views and all this stuff. Well, I guess it was just to get views. It was just for me to craft a good video and see what was considered a good video. So it was mm -hmm. more so of like the journey was what I was like down for. Now that this is my job, like why don't I do that? I'd say just because I think for what I do, it would just seem very like disingenuous. That just might mm. be in my head, but maybe it's just because I'm not used to it. If I started to do it, I just feel like it, it would be. But also when I watch videos on YouTube and people tell me to do that, it kind of like annoys me. But I think for me, it's just like an afterthought. Like I, my thing is I'm going to provide you with so much entertainment in this video that you're going to want to follow me. That's like my goal. I'm trying to make this as fun as possible for me and you that you're like, I want to see this again. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, that's cool. I, I agree with you. I think sometimes you just... You it's one of those things where it's so expected you're just like mindless to it like whenever i hear a youtuber like hey please uh click that subscribe like the video and stuff like i maybe do it a one in a hundred times if i haven't mm. already right like to yeah. for it to be like oh i viewed this and it to trigger something in my head to actually do that i don't think it ever does i get why people do it jack do you have any data on like because you recently the, just started doing there's that. definitely data on um the conversions uh there's like a reason why people say like like and subscribe because those like do gain you more yeah. likes and more subscribers i've been gaining more followers i actually have it to where um there's an animation of turning on my notification bell because that's what i'd prefer more than anything mm -hmm. for people to my like existing subscribers to get notified when i have a new mm -hmm. video because mm -hmm. i'm more worried about them than i am about like acquiring the new ones you know like treating your pre-existing fan base that, yeah you're the yeah, only person sense. i know that like pushes that the notification bell on TikTok. Yeah. Right. Well, I recently found out that the notification bell on TikTok was for live streaming. <laughs> oh, that is so okay. funny. So if I ever need to go live, then I have like a ton of people that'll be there. But <laughs> <laughs> like, that's oh, funny. Yes. Do you have a number of people that have the notification bell on? Uh, not on TikTok, but on YouTube, it's about like 15 to 20% now. 
and it was about wow. nine percent before I started doing the thing. So I think it's been helpful. Like I think for some people it makes sense. Like yours, like I think it, like you can totally work it in where it makes sense because you're already like talking directly to them about like just whatever you want to talk about. Whereas for me, I'm like ice cream, and I'm like, if you like ice cream, follow me. Like, I totally like, like could you imagine if Charlie D'Amelio like finished doing that? And she was like, <laughs> follow for more. And right? Be like, what? Like, it just like a off the vibe of what I'm doing. Yeah. I don't know. So, like, one thing that I found, this is like a creator hack, you know, you love that word now because Malad always know. says it. But, hey, because I mean, all around it works well. Like, I don't, this isn't the reason why I do this, but I'm just telling you that if you don't do this, you should do it because it's going to work well for you. At the beginning, I started making videos to celebrate my milestones because it was fun. And then also because I, obviously I'm thankful for like this opportunity to get more people. But whenever I would do those videos, majority of the time people see that and they realize that I'm not a part of this. I want to be a part of this. So now I'm going to subscribe to you. Now I'm going to follow mm -hmm. you. And so if you're not doing that, I recommend doing that, especially if you're small. If you're small, that is like the snowball that you pray for. You make a video and you're like, oh my gosh, yesterday we were just at 10K and you guys got me to 500K overnight, something crazy. And then now you're at a million, you know, because everyone's just like, this is so crazy. This kid's blowing up. I want to be a part of it. And so they're going to yeah. follow you, subscribe to you, whatever. I've seen people make like celebration videos for 10 million that blew up and got them to 12 million. Exactly. Like, no, seriously. Mm. Yeah, do it. People I want mean, to join that cult you know that, yeah. to be in that following and those videos are usually so fun because you have to get so creative of like what you're gonna do yeah. i mean some people are lame but for the most <laughs> joe bartolosi like, did the chubby bunny challenge for eight million and he just put like <laughs> eight ice cubes in his mouth <laughs> do you remember this <laughs> he didn't even get to eight though right didn't he stop at like four or something he, at, he was like i think i could do like six of these and he did like two <laughs> he's like <laughs> that's a that's a good tip that's a good tip. i need to start doing that so same thank you dylan you're welcome. Um, I want to know what is like your day to day strategy, right? Like you wake up, like what, how do you get your ideas for a TikTok? How long do you like, a, like how long does it take you to shoot a TikTok? Do you have content banked? Do you like, what do you like, what does your day to day look like here? Yeah. So it honestly depends, which I'm excited because if you guys don't know, but me and Tejas are about to go out of town together for like three weeks, but Tejas, you're going to experience this on like 10 different levels so that'll be fun mm -hmm. so right now it's a giant mess because i'm at home i don't have a job i just pretty much go to random places and ask if i can make videos with them and they let me uh so right now i have like content banked and then i try to set things up so that i'm ready to make content whatever uh but when i am somewhere which where you're going to experience so like when i'm at a cold stone because there's times where cold stones will pay for me to come out and I make videos there uh when it's like that i am just working and things come to me and it's kind of like a lot of fun uh like a customer will come in they'll be like oh my gosh i know you from tiktok i'm like oh, sweet let's make a video let me throw my camera so i throw my camera we make a video real quick i throw them the ice cream and then i just talk about that experience and then it's a lot of fun uh or if someone orders a cake and then there's usually a story behind that of like whatever's going on with that person tell the story of the cake and then i get to make the cake and there's the video and so normally with that i'm so excited i want to post it immediately and i can't bank that stuff for too long because mm it'll just eat away at me and then I'll forget about the video. And then I don't want to post it anymore because it's not special anymore. Cause it's like that period is over in my head. If that makes sense. It's honestly a giant mess. Depends on what's going on. So when I was managing cold stone, I was there all the time. So at the very beginning, I just, I would go into work cause I would try to make videos when I wasn't working. But then when I was at my prime, it was like, I would make the video and then I'd go out to my car and do the voiceover and then post the video and then go back into work. And then I would just work and then make another video and then go back to my car and make voiceover, post the video, go back into work. Um, and my wow. coworkers kind of hated me for it sometimes. How about um ideas, right? Like well, how many times were you posting, would you say, at your prime a day? Um, I would try to post as much as possible. Um, yeah. So I would try to post anywhere from like three to nine times a day. On TikTok. You would post nine times yeah. a day on TikTok. Yeah, and that's what's sad to me oh, now is because oh looking God. back, there was a period of time where I could have posted nine times a day and I could have got at least like two million views on every video if I would have, which oh is so sad God. because I look back now and I'm like, I missed a huge opportunity, but it's fine. Okay, okay. So you had, let's just say the days you had nine TikToks, how did you get the ideas for nine TikToks? Okay, so I have a very weird brain. And <laughs> uh, first off, at the beginning... I could make a video about anything and it would pretty much go viral because that's just the standing of where my account was at that time. Like I made videos, like I've said this a thousand times, but I made videos of me breaking down boxes and just explaining what I was doing. We made a video of scrubbing the toilets. Like we legitimately made videos about absolutely everything at our job. 
in sometimes they were like sarcastic and people just didn't realize it but they would go viral mm -hmm. just because that's what things were doing but for me it's more so of like something just comes to me and I'm like okay how can i make a loop out of this and it's kind of like how the video goes through in my head but i mean now it's pretty much like i have it down to a science like somebody comes in and they order an ice cream i know exactly how i need to do the video to make it work mm -hmm. somebody orders a cake i know exactly the pattern i need to go through um, it does get tricky when I go to new places cause I'm not used to it. So it takes a lot more thought and like preparation of what I need to do. And sometimes there's a lot of mess ups and I just can't post the video. No, but I think it's interesting just the way you thought about that because like my old content and Jack's old content, like the way we go about it is, I mean, Jack, how many, how much research do you do in before a video? Right, like yours are so crafted. Like you two are on the opposite side of the spectrum, definitely. Right yeah. now, of like what you're kind, like how many times a week do you post, Jack? I, I'm posting about every other day, so about four times a week. Yeah, mm. and Dylan on the other hand, right, in his prime was is posting that in in a morning, right? Yeah, and um, yeah. I mean, just like I to you, it sounded so simple of like, hey, it's like I do what I do in my daily process, kind of make a story out of it. But for like Jack on the other hand, what it's I need to research 10 nightmarish sheep facts, right? Sheep. And like <laughs> sheep fat made something up, right? Um, so it's interesting how you go about it. And that's actually like the biggest transition I went through when I like first met you, Dylan, right? Yeah. I um, Nothing gets you, Jack, because you're obviously killing it, right? But I felt like I was doing TikTok wrong for a good bit, right? I was like my activation energy to make one TikTok was like two hours, Right. I woke up at whatever time I remember, like at school, I was like from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. I record my TikTok. Right. And like I remember being at 11 a.m., I'd be just exhausted. And that's why I thought I was doing something wrong. Nothing against that style because, again, we had people like our, one of our mutual friends, Dental Digest, who posts maybe once or twice a week. Yeah. Absolutely killing it still. Yeah. Right. And it, they're super edited. They're super like the cuts, the pacing of it, insane. I think it's so interesting just to to see the way like you and Milad, you and Milad, I, I'll group you guys together. Right. Yeah. Um. I remember when I first met Milad in Miami, we went to, we were in the hotel lobby and I was asking, I was like, what are you going to make today? He's like, Tay, just like looking around this lobby, I have four TikTok ideas already. Like yeah. I could make a TikTok about this painting right here. I could make a TikTok about those like little sculpture things on this bar. And I was like, holy shit. Holy shit. Like that, that was mind blowing to me. Let's go into these two strategies. Like, yeah. Um, if we talk about Dylan and Malaz, for example, the idea is basically anything is content. And the more content I create, the better of a content creator I become. So Dylan has made so many videos at this point that he can create content out of pretty much any idea. So he's not worried about the ideation process. And then someone like me, I think it's about three to four hours now for me to create one TikTok. And like, I'm going for that viral video and I'm like making sure like everything is perfect, like similar to Dental Digest. And like, we're becoming good creators in a different way almost. Dylan's yeah. making it a machine sure. to where he can make content out of anything. And then we're making a machine to where we're trying to like figure out the algorithm and trying to create the perfect piece of content to put out there. I don't think there's like one method. Another thing is like we're comparing two and I, I'd say there's probably like five other ones that we aren't even thinking of right now. Definitely. Cause yeah. everyone has like their own little ways and it's crazy that so many things work for so many people. What are your thoughts on the idea of a, a parasocial relationship, Dylan? I'd say that I probably have a strong one which is like kind of like weird to think about but mm -hmm. honestly like i think it's i think it is important for people to talk about it but i think people get so freaked out by it and i'm like i just live Isn't, in it yeah. you know like this is reality and there's so many more positives to it than negatives in my opinion but i might change yeah. my mind on that later but for me it's sure. like i can meet somebody and the ice is already broken they already know who i am and i could be freaked out by that or I can look at that and say, this is an amazing opportunity. I don't have to introduce myself to somebody. I don't have to give them an idea of who I am. They already have one. And so I can just roll with that from there. And so then I just get to know mm -hmm. them. They already know about me. I don't have to talk about myself. So I just to learn a lot about them. Um, so it's a lot of fun for me, uh, in my opinion. But that's just your perspective on it. No, I mean, you're completely right, right? Objectively, there is no reason for me to watch someone break a box down on camera. But I want yeah. to watch you break a box down because I'm invested in your story. Jack, I'm not saying that you don't have a parasocial re relationship, but what's driving your content is the value in it, right? It's like I'm watching yours because objectively 
I want to watch 10 Nightmare Sheep Facts. That's yeah. right. <laughs> right. But it, right. it's um, also both. It, it, it's kind of like percentages. Mm-hmm. I would say mine is definitely more focused on like the value add rather than like the parasocial relationship. But there are other yeah. people doing my content. It's like maybe it's the quality of the video. Maybe it's the pacing. So that it, maybe it's not mm-hmm. – it's storytelling combined with the value. Emma Chamberlain, for example. Like Tejas and I had this conversation about parasocial relationships and we are like, how do you build a parasocial relationship – from like starting out with parasocial content and like you really don't you really have mm-hmm. to like start with the value like emma chamberlain yeah. did hair tutorials at first is that she what you did said DIY, like diy fashion she, okay so like she did diy yeah. fashion and then so like you start the video for the diy fashion and then you end the video loving emma chamberlain so yeah. mm-hmm. it's it, if you're wanting to become a creator you have to start with the value you have to start yeah, with yeah. the beautiful storytelling of the ice cream and then then you get into like, okay, how do I put myself into this? How do I make people mm-hmm. watch this because they love Dylan LeMay, not some guy with ice cream in his hands, you know? Yeah. I still go the value route though. I'm always mm-hmm. teaching something. So like whenever, because yeah, yeah. it's funny, you guys probably will some point, I don't know if this is true to you guys now, but I mean, I live with my family still or again. And so I moved back home with my family in January. But like one thing that you'll learn is like when all this starts to go, like your family wants to be involved. And you have to figure out like how to go about that because you can ruin your relationships easily by just shooting out everyone's idea. But you have to learn how to curve their ideas into something that works well Mm. for them and for you. What I always tell them is I have to teach somebody something. So Mm. sure, we have this we have this ice cream recipe and it's special to us. And yeah, there might be a couple people that care enough about me that they'll watch this video. But if I'm not giving them something, some reason to watch this video, then they're not going to care about us or our family recipe, you know? How do you um how do you get people to care about your video? So kind of like uh, Jack was saying earlier is like he looks at the algorithm and crafts all these things. See, I don't necessarily I guess look at the algorithm like I do somewhat, but more so like I think about the people because the people mm-hmm. drive like the algorithm. So that's kind of like my perspective on it. Somebody is selfish. That's the reason why I made my videos a little bit shorter is because if I'm cramming more in here, then they're more likely to stick around because mm-hmm. they don't care. They're just looking to get something out of my videos. So I'm going to give that to them. So, I mean, there's there's different re- reasons why people watch my videos. People watch them to learn. Some people watch them to feel satisfied. Some people just want to hear me yep. talk, which is the weirdest thing. Um, so that, I just That's why I watch your videos. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> One of the very first things Jack and I, when we first met, talked about was how do we make people care about what we're saying, especially as talking mm-hmm. head characters, right? I was like, okay, I'm talking about this idea of leverage. Why like, I was like, I kept saying things like, this is something you need to know as a 20 year old, this idea of leverage, yeah. like I try to pull them into here. But on the yeah. other end, it's like, people are watching your videos about your like six generation old ice cream. Why? You're not yeah. telling them they need to know this. Like what, how are, why are they watching this? I want to like pull it from you. A lot of things that I put into it is just like, just have fun and goof around, but mm-hmm. then also make it like they're having fun with them. Like, it's not just yeah. like you having fun and they're watching you. No. So like one thing that made my video pop off at the beginning is that first day at Coldstone video. I didn't do it as this is my first day at Coldstone. No, this is your first day at Coldstone. You're mm. watching. You're seeing my hands. These aren't my hands, though. These are your hands. You're doing I this. love it. So let's it. go scoop out this ice cream. All right. Now All you're right. going to chop, chop, fold, fold this together. So I'm doing it as if I'm teaching you rather than I'm just telling I you what I'm it. doing. And You're so right. that's one thing that I did. And I didn't even like do it on purpose. I wasn't even like calculated. Exactly. I was just, exactly. I was a manager and I was teaching this new person and I, that's how I went about it. It wasn't even intentional. It's not like I sat down. I was like the psychologist on TikTok. Tell me, I need to use the word Y O U in my, like, no, I just was doing something <laughs> and it worked out. But like, if you go back, you can see that. But I would say that's one thing that you can do is use the word you all the time, but mm-hmm. also just talk to the person, have a conversation. Through. Almost make yeah, a video I, like you're FaceTiming someone and you're recording the video, you know, exactly. like act like it's your friend there and you're trying to entertain your friend, you know? Exactly. You just, yeah. I think that's such an interesting point, right? Where you're like, yo, the behind the scenes of Cold Stone is not well known, right? Yeah. It's so interesting to see what it's like on the other side of the counter, because that's something that the majority of people haven't seen. That's already the reason why, right? It's so simple. People are like, oh my gosh, how do you make so many videos? How do you do this, whatever? I'm like, do you realize I'm literally just putting a camera on and I'm 
doing my job. Like I'm just doing yeah. my life. Like I didn't have to go out. I don't like, that's what sucks is when I see some of these people, especially like chefs. I mean, they have to go out and like get all the ingredients. They have oh, to do yeah. all this stuff. Like to me, I'm, a, I'm at work. I have to do this either way. Like it's already there. I, mean, I, just literally, I scoop some ice cream out. I throw it in the air, I put it on the stone. It's like 30 so seconds and I'm done. And then I just have to go home and like edit it and then talk over it. How long does it take you to make one TikTok? All right. Say I was at Cold Stone and I was making a, a TikTok. It would yeah. take me 10 minutes tops. That's if I have to like redo my voiceover at all. 10 minutes tops. Wow. I love it. So did, do you film the video first and then like th like ideate the voiceover second? Or is it like you think of what you're going to say in the voiceover and then you get footage to match that? Um, it's really rare that I do my voiceover first. There are times where I have done that, where like I have the idea of what I want to say and I have to make something to go with it. But majority of the time I make the video and then I watch the video as I'm editing it. I'm like, I don't, what do I want to say about this? And then I just wing it. I don't type anything out. I don't really think anything through. Um, so you do the times, visual but... storytelling first. Yeah. And then I just talk over what? it. Just whatever comes to mind. I literally just start talking. And if it makes sense, then I go with it. If it doesn't make sense, I just redo it. <laughs> I saw it firsthand in Miami, dude. It's crazy. I should do the sushi story. Like we were all eating sushi one day and I was like doing something with like just talking to Milad. Dylan makes a TikTok without me even noticing just in front of me. Right. Like I, he, like, I, I was like, wait, did you want to record something too, Dylan? He's like, already did it. And I was like, what? Like I freaked out because it was so just natural. And like, that was with you without a tripod. He literally went like this. He yeah. was like, yeah, it's insane. It's like, the kid, he's got a crazy process, but all right, we're, we're coming up to the end and I wanted to get to a couple other topics, dude. Like we're, we're, we're this is an awesome podcast so far. Kind of glad we're recording it twice. I like. I actually pulled a lot out of this. I think this conversation was a lot more valuable than what we did in the first, though, because mm -hmm. it's a lot more natural. I want to talk to creators about like just mental health reasons. Like I talk about this. Um, I'm starting to a lot more um, with creators, and I wanted to ask you, Dylan. Like, how has it been being a creator, right? Um, and like everything that goes into it. And the reason I want to ask this is like you as a creator, you're playing every role. Right. You're yeah. the chief executive officer of your business. You're the chief financial officer. You're the chief strategic officer, everything. Right. And it's a lot of shoes you have to fill. Dude, honestly, that's a really good question. And I feel like in time, like I'll be able to better answer it, but I can give you like the best guess from where I'm at now. Go ahead. Is I mean, I was doing terrible like mentally before um, starting content. I like mm -hmm. graduated college and I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing with my life. I'm working at Cold Stone. Um, what it like, I'm supposed to be like an adult. Like, my life doesn't look like an adult life. So, what should it look like? And so, it was like wrestling with all these questions and putting so much like weight on my own shoulders. Then that was like going into 2020. And then everyone knows like how great of a year 2020 was for everyone. And so, mm -hmm. when I started making videos, it was kind of just like a distraction for me trying to like figure out my life and putting so much pressure on myself. And I was just having so much fun. And so, at the beginning, I could never sleep because I'd get so many ideas that I legitimately could not sleep. If you go listen to one of my videos from the first like six months of doing this, I sound dead. And that's because I just wasn't <laughs> sleeping. I was just so excited and I was getting such like a dopamine high from making content that I mm -hmm. just didn't sleep. And so it was like destroying me mentally, but I was already like destroyed mentally. So I was like, oh, it's just, just like pick and choose your battles, I guess, oh, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, it sounds so bad. <laughs> I know, right? But then it was hard too because I was also trying to be like a manager of a place, which was like a full-time job. I was working like over 40 hours a week and mm -hmm. I was just doing so much. And then I was also trying to do all this. So when it came time to quit, so I quit my job and I moved home. But then there was like all of that chaos that happened around all that because I was like making the biggest jump of my life. I completely quit my job. I was depending on this, but I was like, I'm just rolling with it. Like, we'll see what happens. So I moved home. But then like I would say to go to where I'm at now is... It's just, it's a lot and it all happened so fast that like, I didn't, like I said, like when I started, it wasn't my goal to get here. So now that I like, I am here, I'm still like mentally playing catch up. Like this is like a dream. It's not real. Mm -hmm. Like I still am mind blown that like, this is yeah. my life. And so I don't know like to it's do crazy. sometimes, but there's so many like new facets of it all every day. There's like your family that wants to be so involved um, in like all these different like things you have to figure out always being on i saw this tiktok yesterday or two days ago and i was cracking up because i was like this is my life but it's like i quit my nine to five so i could work 24 7 <laughs> i was like this the thing <laughs> that is like my brain is, is always going you can't quit content um no. in air at whatever i don't even know how to say his name i don't even think i said it right but uh 
Eric? Eric? Yeah, that's his name. Okay. <laughs> um, Wait, one he, thing. Let me pause you right there. It's so funny. Yeah. Whenever I talk to Dylan, he knows no one. He knows know. no influencers. It's, it's so funny. It's so <laughs> but, bad. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. But uh, when you guys sent me uh, an interview with him with the other guys that are like you guys, but they're not you guys. Um, <laughs> the second best creator who? economy podcast Who's after us. Who's like us? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. But somebody sent me his interview and I was listening to it and it was funny because he said it. He like summed up my thoughts in like such a good way and I hope I can say it close to what he did. But he pretty much said like with content, you can always do more. And so it's like, how do you, what do you define as enough? Like what is good enough? Because yeah, right now I could, I could go work somewhere and I could make all that content like I used to make. I could go find a Cold Stone again and move there and do like what I did before. And it'd probably do really well for me content wise. So like there's always more you could be doing. I could be posting so much more. I could be on more platforms. Yeah. I could be doing, like, you know what I'm saying? Like when you're a content creator, like you set your own limits. And mm -hmm. so it's like hard to figure that out. And I think that's one of the most like mentally draining things. We are conditioning ourselves to be like such dopamine like tweakers like i mean like when mm -hmm. i am not making videos like i feel like i'm going through like withdrawals like it's not healthy and even my family notices it they're like are you good and like i'm not good yeah. like no you're and it's not even like the points. views it's not like it's not the clout it's not anything like that for me it's more so just like i am in such a routine of making videos and just being enjoying that process that when i'm not making videos i don't know how to enjoy life it's like the mm -hmm. weirdest thing and so that's what i'm saying like there's so many of these things that I'm like learning about myself and learning like how this all affects me that in like six months from now, I probably could have a lot better answers because all this happened so fast. I mean, it's been like a year. My whole life is completely different. There's so many things like I have to learn and figure out that are going on in my head that I have no idea what's going on. You hit so many great points there. I love the one about saying like you're always on, right? I'm actually, yeah. I might be making a TikTok today about this, but like I made a, I made a quote. You're better. <laughs> I better, right? <laughs> Let me just cop this, Dylan. There, there, someone, uh, someone commented on my thing like, whenever I posted another thing about Dylan, I was like, ah, it's dick writing other cre bigger creators again, huh? <laughs> I'm just like, I, 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 when I meet you tomorrow, <laughs> Dylan, that's the first TikTok I'm making, duetting that, <laughs> yes. or stitching. It was so funny. But you're right. Like I made a quote saying like. I for, I constantly forget the day of the week because every Monday is like a Saturday. And so many people are like, that's awesome. Like you're living the dream, right? You don't have to work for five days. It's like, yeah, there's a flip side of that though too, where it's like, I wake up, I have to make content for the day. You're so right. Like you work that nine to five and like you get home and you're like done. You're like, okay, I can yeah. relax. I can watch Netflix. I can do whatever I want. Or like, like yeah. a, a, a kid in school, like you go home, do your homework and then you're like done. It's like us. It's like, are we really ever done? You know? No, because you could be responding to comments. Like you could be, yeah. Like you could, you can always that. be doing something. It, it, it's like where is that balance? Because it's such a competitive world. Like Dylan, mm -hmm. you're probably like a top 700, 500 tip TikToker on the app. It's like yeah. you have so much room to grow. Um, yeah, and it, it's just like you kind of have to find that own balance in your life. It's like how yeah. bad do I really want to be number one? You know exactly. And the thing is like. It's the hard part about it all too, is that like, I'm always trying to be like hyper aware of like what's going on around me because I've seen other creators where they put the blinders on and they're literally running over everyone and burning down every bridge around them to yep. get to that place. And it's like, I never want to be that person either where I like look back and I'm like, yeah, I have a hundred million followers on TikTok, but I don't have a family anymore because I just, just left them all behind, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, or I don't have like friends anymore. So it's like just hard to like figure all that out and see all that and be like aware of everyone's feelings but also be able to do what's right for you it's, it's tricky for sure no 100 percent. how was that aspect for you how was the friends aspect um did a lot of people like diss you for doing tiktok or did a lot of people like start like trying to rekindle their relationship with you how was that um in a way i mean i wouldn't say anyone like tried to reach out and become like best friends with me again but i mean there's random people that are like hey so like they just like say hey and like glad that everything's working out for you or just like happy for mm -hmm. you um but nobody nothing like crazy from all of that uh but like with friends it's like it was a natural progression in my life so for you guys it's a little different but like i had been two years out of college so it's like all of those relationships like everyone had kind of like moved on and they're like to their like adult life but for me i was still kind of in like the same city that i went to college in. i was working the same yeah. job that i worked since i was in high school you know so for mm -hmm. me it was like this was my next step into becoming like 
an adult, you know, majority of my friends from college, they have like families, like they're like married and like have kids and stuff. Um, so for like those relationships, they're the same, like they're the same as they were before. Um, but I've met a lot of cool friends because now I have all these new people that I know through like content creators where they mm -hmm. can relate on a different level because me talking about half the stuff we just talked about for the last five minutes, they're literally just going to shake their head like, yes. And just be like, dude, that sucks because they can't relate. They can't add can't anything relate. to it. You know? Yeah. Whereas when you talk to other creators, they're like, oh, I get that. I've been there. Or, hey, this yeah. would really help. This is what's helped me out. So it's more of like a back and forth conversation. Exactly. So I think there's a place for friends at every level. Um, mm -hmm. But there's, there, I haven't had any crazy stories of people like trying to like clout surf. But like I've told Tages before is like everything. Just if you understand that, then you know how to like work that relationship mm -hmm. where it's like, you know that this person just wants me for clout. That's fine. Like, I can be your friend as long as I understand that. That's, like, a good place to be is when you have an understanding of what their intentions are. How are you – how would you say you're doing, like, now? And they've kind of talked about, like, how mental health was kind of when everything yeah. was happening in this so, June, July. Fun, yeah. July 2021. Yeah. I would say I'm in, like, a transition period. So those are always, like, difficult because it's just a lot of, like, patience. Yeah, so – and I think them. I've been in a transition period – pretty much since like the first of the year since I like quit right now um I'm like ready to leave like I'm ready for us to be gone on Friday um I've yeah. been home for a few weeks and I have like I don't like my room right now this is the room that I was at like when I lived in when I was in high school and pretty much like yeah. when I move home we just kind of just drop my stuff and I've just yep. been here I haven't like unpacked anything because like I know this is not where I'm staying and so I've been traveling a lot for the last six months and it's been amazing it's been so much fun I'm trying to enjoy this season while I can travel yeah um, but now I've been home for like a couple weeks and I'm ready to like go do something. For I need sure. to do something. So like, I'm super excited for us to go back to cold stone. Uh, yeah. I've missed it. It's been a while and that's like, that's what I do. And so it's like weird yeah. that I haven't done it for a while. Speaking of, uh, ending this transition period and the kind of closing out the podcast here, Dylan you kind of just announced that you're potentially open, opening up your own ice cream place, right? Um, yeah. that doesn't sound like, uh, that sounds like you're transitioning something cool. What's uh tell tell us about that? Yeah, so I'm I'm really excited because it's I'm like really I get excited. To... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you. I'm so excited. <laughs> you sound no, ecstatic, cause... bro. <laughs> I know that's that's my life. That's my life. No, I'm just really excited. It's gonna be so cool to be able to have freedom to do whatever I want, uh, but then to make it the best experience for myself and for like my viewers and for my future customers. So that's what I'm just so excited about is that. Mm -hmm. Like the sky is the limit. I'm no longer limited by like a franchise or I'm no longer limited by an owner. I'm no longer limited by like my time because I will be able to do anything I want because it's going to be mine. So yeah. I'm just so excited. It's going to be it's going to be a blast. It's so cool. I have so many fun. Anything, ideas. Uh, anything you could hint, anything about uh, about this alleged ice cream place. You guys have I cookies would. and cream. <laughs> 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 i honestly don't even know we haven't got that far yet like i don't know how many flavors we're gonna have i don't know any of that yeah. it's more so of 25 just, i just know it's it is gonna number. be the most fun experience I love we're gonna it. do stuff That's that no one else does i love how i'm like pressuring you about these questions but i'm also kind of like on the team so i'm just like dylan you better not say anything <laughs> <laughs> like, like flip both sides right now like dylan don't reveal anything it's so funny no it's i testing. think it's gonna be really fun it's it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. There's a lot to yeah. come. For me personally too, it's like this is such an interesting venture. Such an interesting venture. I'm excited to work with you, Dylan. It's cool, yeah. dude. Dylan, is this like the thing you're the most excited about right now? You'd say, or like I know you're really growing fast on YouTube. Um, like, is, is there any oh, other yeah. ventures that like you're super excited about? Yeah, this is actually a good hint that I can give away, <laughs> Tages. But um, so. <laughs> Like I said before, like, honestly, like, I don't really care about numbers. It's still mind blowing that I'm have a million subscribers on YouTube. Like, what is that? But like, one thing that I really want to do is that I love like relationships. I love building relationships. And so one thing that I want to do is use my YouTube as like a way to help other creators get like kind of like an edge and use my ice cream place as a way to do that. So say Milad comes to my store, we develop a flavor together. We make a whole like youtube episode mm. about us making that flavor and then have it like run in the store for a couple weeks or something like that's something that i would love to do because then it helps us all you know like malad's mm -hmm. people will come and they get to try malad's flavor but then also like people that are my followers that don't know malad will get to experience malad you know i just yeah. feel like it's just such a fun thing on so many levels that i'm just excited to do and i hope he does not put doritos in his ice cream but doritos in his ice we'll cream see. <laughs> 
the Malazka Malazka ice cream edition. Starts to <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, dude, there's so much to talk about still, right? Like we didn't yeah. even touch YouTube. That's a crazy story and a half. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, this hours. We got to rethink an hour, Jack. But we I mean, we're already again. over. Round three. <laughs> round three. Round uh, the ghost one of two and three. Yeah, dude. You're Jack has anytime. seven minutes. Let's do an hour and seven minutes. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. We kind of talked about like what the future like looks like for Dylan, right? I mean, dude, we pulled apart so much. Just like us as creators too. I, I talk yeah. every single conversation I've had with you. I'm just like, damn, like you're killing it, dude. You're killing it. So, how many months have you been a creator now? Like since you started TikTok, May fourth. So I, it's been a little over a year. It's so about a year and two months. So about months. this yeah. is like month fourteen, month fifteen. So. I am giving my stamp of approval and saying that within the 25 months you have as a creator, Dylan is doing things to ensure longevity by building this ice cream Ooh. shop, building like this, this YouTube channel. That's good. You've mm-hmm. got the Tejas stamp of approval too. Dude, imagine like so. if we have a creator, we talk to them for an hour and we're like, you don't have the stamp of approval. <laughs> I think we have to rethink this bit. No, no. I think no. I think what you could do is just give them like action steps of like how they can improve. It's not so like you yeah, fail, like yeah, you yeah. suck. Bye. It's more of like, no, no like I think like, you're, I think you're doing well, but I think we're concerned about these areas and then yeah. give them like a list of things that you think that they should do to improve. No, I like that. It's good. Because I mean, you, like, you, you want to be wanna, helpful. Do you want to replace Jack as my host? My co-host? <laughs> I don't have time for that. Um, <laughs> I just final, fi- final question, Dylan, is like, uh, whose it's eyebrow right. slits are better, Jack or mine? It's it's blurry. Hey, just, you didn't have it on my screen. It looks like you just have half your eyebrow shaved off. So I'm gonna go with Jack. Hey. <laughs> wow. Okay. Fine. Deal. Um, cool. They just did it himself. Whose so. whose perm is better? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, <laughs> we had one rule coming on the podcast. You just <laughs> broke the one rule. That's so funny. Why is that even a perm anymore? It's just like, I look yours. like I have some... Like, yeah, I forgot hair. you had a perm. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I don't have a perm. I want to be very clear about that. But Okay, let's wrap this up. Dylan, thank you for coming on 25 so Months, episode two. This was great. I feel bad because Dylan's like, yeah, you shouldn't say like and subscribe, but we're going to do it anyway, Dylan, because... I didn't say you shouldn't. I Dylan, you, you should say it for us, actually. Yeah, actually All say right. it for us. If you want to hear more people talk... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> like, subscribe. Um, and I don't hit know, that notification them. bell. Hit the notification bell. I don't even know what platform is this on. All. YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like and subscribe for more. Oh, is it on all? <laughs> Find us all on TikTok. Add all of our usernames that I'm not going to say in right now. In the description. And Triller. In the description. Not and Triller. And Triller is that you said for <laughs> real? Let's end this thing up. Thank this you. This is so messy. I'm sorry. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> <laughs>